Hey guys, I'm gonna do this video to just like showcase and sort of do a commentary on how to really survive and kite against double melee cleave as a affliction warlock in Shadowlands. A lot of people have been asking me for this one and just gonna talk through in real time what I do, why I do it and what I can do better because I actually do make a few mistakes in this video and uh, hopefully you guys can get something from it, uh, some advice on how to really just survive and where to stand is the, main, is the main part. So we're up against Warrior Rhett, a priest. Probably one of the easier melee cleave comps to kite. Doesn't have a windwalker. Uh, warriors are pretty kiteable. Rhett Pallies are extremely kiteable. So if you play well against this, especially with a paladin, having freedom is actually huge. First things first, especially on Tolveron, which is a huge map. The biggest map in the game actually for Warlocks. Gateway here to here and put your port behind here. Sometimes if they charge in, they're actually able to stop your gateway, so you always want to be behind this little corner in order to get that gateway across. And uh, you should really tell your teammates to slow them down so they don't just jump in and stop your gate. Because if you get caught your pants da uh, down, where you don't have a gate, you don't have a port, and two melee on top of you, it's awful. So really make sure you're behind this pillar so you can get it off. Secondly, what you want to do next is put corruption on both melee and walk away from them. Do not run forwards into them to dart them. Walk this way downwards, corruption them, and just walk away from them. Something to remember is against warriors, they have charge, which is a 30 yard range. All your darts as a warlock, all the offensive spells you can cast, minus fear, is 40 yards. So you have a 10 yard range gap that you can play with where the warrior can't catch you and uh, you can do whatever you want to him. The main goal is to just never let them touch you in the first place, and so with that you can you can pull ahead global for global. You're able to get all your dots up on everyone, he's not able to touch you and he's just chasing you into terrible spots. So remember, put corruption on them, and look at the direction I'm going. I'm running towards the starting room and trying to do this kind of like circle around the map, um, keeping in my port range and just making it hard for him. The warrior is forced to use heroic leap because of where I'm running, there's no way he's charging me from where he was before. And this is great, because look, he's used leap, he's used charge to get to me. I have port, I have soul shape, I have gateway, we're chilling. I can get away from this warrior, he's not touching me for the next 30 seconds if I don't want him to. And this is really important, because if I'm tanking him, if I'm tanking both these melee, I'm gonna lose this game instantly. Uh, there, there's, there's no healing in Affliction Warlock through two melee, if you're not avoiding damage. So. As soon as they, uh, he commits that, and I instantly port away. And because I get hodged here, I just trinket away and soul shape away because I know that the warrior has no gap closes. He can't touch me unless I let him. And I just kite away into the open away. This is where I actually make a mistake because my kiting path is pretty bad. I'm out of port range and I'm really far away from gate. So if they actually just walk here and cut me off, uh, he's going to hit me until port comes back up or I can waddle my way towards the gateway. Um, as you're kiting away with Soul Shape, you really want to be making like big circles around the map, kind of. Like, uh, it, it was my main goal with this. Um, remember, I walked into the room, I ported, and I did a Soul Shape around the corner, and I'm, I'm trying to do this. Unfortunately, Snuts actually, Izolo, Snuts actually um, kites them here. I would have preferred if he had just ran into the corner, because then I could have followed, and I would have had the gateway. So this is, I guess, a little bit of a positioning mistake by him. But... Um, so yeah, just in this situation, this is a mistake, I guess, from us. The warrior can get to us, can get to me, and if he touches me, he's going to be on me until port comes back up. So I should have seen this a little bit earlier in advance and just moved away a lot more. And another mistake I actually made is I did not keep the warrior and red slowed. So after I soul shape away, um, the red pally actually freed him both DPS. After this soul shape here is when I should have reapplied corruptions to the DPS and make sure that they're slowed. I can't stress how important this is. In every arena game as an Affliction Lock, you need to make sure Corruption Slow is on everyone in the game. The less they can move, the more obvious what they're trying to do becomes. Basically, you optimize um, your, your kiting path and minimize their uptime on you, so it's, it's very, very good. So that's a mistake I make, so make sure you guys are keeping Corruption Slow on both the melee like this, and especially on the Priest as well, so that he's unable to chase the melee, training us. So yeah, th this positioning is a bit awkward for me because he brought them to me basically. So I blame this one on Snuts. No, Are you kidding me? But anyways, um, 
As you can see, in this situation here, I'm just getting completely crapped on. For the next uh, 5 seconds, I'm just sitting here tanking it, trying to juke stuff. Cubsy was able to keep me up with wings, the Divine Toll, but I really, if I had just kited better in this situation, I would have been able to survive and not taken any of this damage. It wouldn't have been nearly as scary. Something you also want to do is, once you get pressure off against them, once you get your dots up and you pop, you really want to port and move away from your port as well. So we talked about how the warrior's charge range is only 30 yards. If I port and move away while he's slowed, I can abuse his charge range so that he's unable to charge me and only use Heroic Leap to get to me. And that's really beneficial because Heroic Leap is the better mobility um, get closer for them compared to charge. And that's because if he Heroic Leaps to me, I could gate max range away and he wouldn't be able to charge me. Whereas if I let him charge me, it's coming up in two seconds, then if I took the gate, he would be able to Heroic Leap right on top of me and stick on me. So remember, if you can force him to use Heroic Leap first, it's great um, because charge is just the lesser of the, the two mobility spells they have. So in right here is a mistake I made because I was greedy for damage. I actually just sat here and started casting uh, spells. But um, really, as the warrior started walking towards me, as his charge was coming up, I should have taken this time to keep on moving this way towards the room, away from him. If he had charged me here, he could have. Um, he, w I would have had the gate, and then he would have potentially had leap for me, and that's just that's a mistake for me, and uh, something I could have done more optimally. He actually gets the charge from me here, and I want you guys to pay attention right now to where I'm dragging him. So the priest is at the pillar, and I was like over here, and, the, and both DPS were on me. I could have taken the gate, but I think he would have just leapt on me. Um, when you are being trained by two melee, you want to kite away from the enemy healer. The reason for this is, if I had, if, if I if I go this way, I drag the priest to come off the pillar, so snots can harass him with shears and hexes and such like that, and I can also drag their melee out of range of the healer by going into the corner of the map. So this is actually perfect for me because I know I'm out of port range but it's not up for a few seconds. I can always walk to the gate and these guys, they're, they're making like a terrible like... Well not a terrible decision but they have a hard decision to make. So the priest is slowed and having to come off the pillar so he can get harassed by snuts and I, I'm walking away from the warrior who isn't He's reluctant to use leap to get to me, and he doesn't have charge. This whole time, I'm avoiding damage while instant darting, and just uh, I I'm winning. I'm winning this exchange if that makes sense, because my dots are ticking. I'm doing damage, granted not as much if, as if I was free casting, but the warrior is unable to touch me, and the red is also losing uptime as well. Another thing to mention also. Uh, against warriors, you can gateway their Spear of Bastions. It is the only mobility spell we have that cancels Bastion. If you Soul Shape or Port, you get sucked back in. So if a warrior makes the mistake of Bastioning you, um, you can take the gate. So really keep that in mind because it screws them over really hard. As I do here. Right after I took the gate, I was on top of my port, which is kind of shitty for me. Um, as soon as that happens, you want to move away as soon as possible, keep them slowed, and then just put it away to break up the damage, if that makes sense. So if you see what I do here, after I port, or after I gate, I drag them a little bit away, and then I port away. I should have actually waited for their freedom to fall off the warrior so I can slow them first, and then done that. But um, it ends up working out anyway, and it's kind of good because then I can explain to you guys now why what I did was bad. But See, by dragging into the corner of the map and away from the priest, they're really reluctant to chase me because if we have any kind of pressure at all, if they do chase me, then Snuts is able to just free cast on them and make it really scary for them. Against double melee as well, you guys might have a hard time casting or really getting damage off. If you kite really well and just position in like far away from the enemy healer and make it reluctant for them to chase you 
you won't have to fake cast as much because they won't be able to hit you as often. And it's just, it makes the game so much easier to play rather than just sitting there and face tanking them. I use Unending Resolve here because the red procs are wings and I have no mobility really to get away. I'm just kind of stuck here for the next um, next while. Against uh, especially red pallies, you really need to respect the wings. And I guess the main goal really of um, fighting double melee cleave is to avoid as much damage as possible, but when you do have to tank them, give them the respect and either use a cooldown or have your healer use a cooldown. Don't risk it and get low. I think trading cooldowns like that is totally fine, and um, especially against a priest healer who goes oom um very, very quickly. It's been two minutes, he's at 34% mana. Against a priest healer, it's, it's basically you just need to live long enough and you win the game. So that's why I use Unending Resolve. So the reason why I actually kite this way to the corner of the map again, even though it's out of port range, is because I have Soul Shape available, and I can always Soul Shape across like this, across the map, draw like a, a kind of like a crescent, and then port back here. That's that's what I'm looking for. By dragging them here, the priest has to come off the pillar, as I mentioned earlier, and we can do so much damage to these guys. If I had dragged um, this way across the middle of the map through Snuts and Cubsy. I would have dragged both the Warrior and Rep Pally into range of Snuts and Cubsy. That's not good to do. You never, almost, you almost never want to bring Cleavers close to your healer or other DPS because then they have to start fake casting, or they can get storm bolted, or they can get Hodge because they're much closer range. So from here, there's no way the Rep Pally is going to go Hodge Cubsy, right? But if I dragged through here on top of him, he might have gotten Hodge or something. And uh, storm bolt's also a 30 yard range. Um, he might have gotten feared or something, even though it's not up. So always just drag them away from your teammates and away from the enemy healer too. I think here I soul shape away, yep. And then I, I draw that circle, that crescent I mentioned earlier this way, because right here I'm about to get into port range, which is just behind the pillar on top of the priest. And uh, I get so far away from them that there's no way they're really going to be able to catch me. The warrior tried to charge me on my soul shape, but I got away again, had another blink. If he does heroic leap to me, I can just simply port and we're just chilling. I'm 40 yards from him, I can just free cast on him and well, Snuts ends up killing the priest randomly. But um, yeah, hopefully this was at all helpful. I guess the main things you guys want to take away from this is avoid damage as much as possible. Never really greed your damage. For um, for for theirs, respect their cooldowns and just run away the whole time. Basically, run away the whole time. Try to force their mobility without using yours, so that you can port. And I hopefully um, me mentioning some of the mistakes I made was helpful to you guys because facing melee cleave is not easy. It's very high pressure. And yeah, hopefully hopefully this guys this is helpful. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs>